hello and welcome back to my channel so today is another very important day in the flower farm today i am starting off these little guys i am starting off my ranunculus so i've tried these ones before and i didn't have much luck with them um namely because i think i started them a little bit too late for the conditions where i lived but also there was a few things that I didn't take into consideration and now obviously from learning from that bit of a disaster I have more of an idea of what I'm going to do now again it's only my second time growing them so I don't know how this is going to turn out but it's just to kind of document the process more for myself than anything so ranunculus what's the thing about ranunculus they're also called Persian buttercups and to me they're a real like luxury flower along the same lines as a peony now whereas peonies are quite hardy plant them outside the perennial they come back year after year they don't take a whole lot of effort ranunculus do take a bit more effort so like when you're planting them you have to remember that they're a big favorite of rodents so you have to try to keep them safe from the rodents they have a tendency to rot if you leave them and sit in them in cold wet soil which is hard because you're growing them over the winter and it's kind of inevitable they're going to be in cold wet soil at some stage so they do take a little bit of looking after and the place where I really went wrong the first time that I grew them was that I planted them um, straight outside when, in the spring when it was time to plant them out with no real weather protection. And you know yourself, storms, all the different weather conditions that spring brings, it wasn't ideal for them and the flowers are actually quite delicate. So that's why I've decided this year I'm going to experiment and I'm going to grow a crop of them in the polytunnel because really when you plant them and when they flower, you don't have tomatoes or anything really growing in the polytunnel at that stage so it's kind of as much about wanting to see if I can make the polytunnel work a little bit more for me so that's why I am doing an experiment this year with ranunculus I've got about maybe 120 to try which isn't many at all but I think it's a big enough number to give me an idea if they're viable to grow as a flower also, I'm hoping that they'll kickstart my early flowers as well. So I'll have um, flowers to sell earlier in the year. So that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing that you need to do with your ranunculus corms before you do anything else is soak them. When you first receive your ranunculus corms, they are going to be extremely dehydrated. Now, the reason for this is when they store them over the winter, they need to be completely dry otherwise they're going to be prone to rot and develop a mold and you really don't want that it's the same way as you have to dry your daily tubers out before you store them over the winter so when you get them they're just going to look like a dried up a bit of a twig you're really the last thing you would think is they would develop into such a beautiful flower so what i do is i put all of my corms together the same varieties into a tupperware uh, or a lunchbox Usually this is the biggest container that I have and I find it's just handier because if I put them in a bowl I can risk breaking it. So I get all of the same varieties together into the Tupperware ready to be soaked and to rehydrate. You just want to leave them for a few hours, not overnight, otherwise you run the risk of them rotting. And I'm also using lukewarm water here because I find lukewarm water penetrates better than cold water. And I'm just covering them all and then I'm going to put the lid on top of the Tupperware. Um, again, I just find by putting it in a Tupperware, it's easier for carrying down to the polytunnel if it was an open bowl, the water would be splashing everywhere, the corms would go everywhere. So just out of handiness sake, I use Tupperwares and then I put the label on top so I know what's what. And the four varieties I'm doing this year are Picote Pink. Love the pink edge of that one. Aviv Purple, it's a really rich color. I'm doing the standard pink, although you see there's nothing standard about it. They're absolutely stunning. And I'm just doing a white one as well. So real crowd pleaser colours. Sorry, it's too bright and I'm squinting, so I have to put my sunglasses on. So this is what the corms look like after they're soaked. Now, obviously, I've tipped off the excess water, but they've gone from kind of these shriveled, just little pieces of like what looked like a bit of a dead tree or something to they've fattened up. And you can see more of a shape and more of a detail on them. So what we're going to do is sew these. Now, I'm not sewing them in anything particularly special. I'm just doing my usual mix of spent mushroom compost and pot and grit. I'm adding the pot and grit because I want to give them plenty of drainage because, as I said, they are prone to rotten, so I don't want them 
sitting in kind of claggy compost and mushroom compost does have a tendency to hold its moisture which is great but in this particular instance it's not ideal so we just want to add in the pot and grit to help with the drainage so that's what it looks like that's kind of the ratio of, of grit to compost that i'm looking at there uh, pot and compost or pot and grit is also a good one to just flesh out your pot and compost because you know the bags of pot and compost can be expensive and that uh, grit I bought was like a 20 kilo bag and I think it was like 6.99 so even if you just put a few scoops of it into your compost and mix it through it kind of makes your compost go a little bit further and drainage is never a bad thing in compost so that would be my little tip add some of that to make your compost go further so this is the seed trays that I'm going to be planting my ranunculus in. They're uh, very heavy plastic. You can get them on different places online. I actually got them off a guy on Facebook Marketplace up the north somewhere. He sells them off. They were good value. I think they were about a pound tray. Um, they're really good. Do you remember I was saying before that I prefer the seed block the soil blockers because the trays are very flimsy and they break. These ones aren't. They're very hard plastic. I've had them for a good few years now. They're definitely worth the investment. Um, I usually use them as well when my tomatoes are growing bigger I use them for my tomatoes so I, I use them a good bit but today we're going to do our ranunculus in them because ranunculus need a bit of space like they're going to stay in these trays until January February-ish I'm just after pricking myself on the thorns that I have it there for a reason we'll go into that in a minute actually so for now I am just going to go and fill this seed tray So that's about how far I'm filling the seed trays. As you can see, I haven't filled them all the way to the top. And the reason being is that when I put my ranunculus in, I'm just going to kind of sit it in onto the top of the soil. So another thing to say is this is the top and this is the bottom. So the way I remember it is, it's like this is the legs and they're down on the ground. And then this is the head at the top of the body. So the legs are standing on the ground and you want the legs standing on your compost. That's just the way that I remember it. You can remember it whatever way you want. <laughs> so I'm just very lightly dipping them into the top of the compost. I'm not burying them. I'm just sitting them in. So there you go. That's what they look like and they're just sitting in. Now, what I'm going to do next is this is a tip I was given a while ago by somebody about growing peas. So I figured that it would extend to ranunculus as well. So as I said before, like these are very, very prone to being eaten by rodents before they've even sprouted or anything. Uh, they absolutely love them. So you need to really protect them. And there's different ways that you can do it. I mean, to, if in an ideal world, I'd just cover them with something and weigh it down. But even at that stage, I think once they start to sprout and you have to take off the cover, they can still go at them i think they can still kind of fairly dig them up until they're plant size so what i want to do is i'm going to try this trick that somebody told me before about planting peas and i went and cut these briars from the hedge and what you do is you cut bits of the briar this is not sharp cut bits of the briar and you put it across and the idea is like that see I had them across that and the idea is if the little rodent friends go trying to dig up your ranunculus that their little noses will hit the thorns on the briar and it will turn them off digging them up now again I don't know if that's an old wives tale I don't know if it will work but I'm willing to give anything a chance Um, I mean if I see excess I should really have gloves on doing this if I see excess rodent damage or any sort of real issue, I will just put traps down around them. But for now, I am going to try this trick. Okay, so... That's very time consuming, I'm not going to lie, and I have a lot of them to do. So maybe for the next tray, I'll just do a couple of lengths across and then put the soil in on top. But that's the idea anyway. 
So what I'm going to do now is I am just going to loosely cover everything. You don't want to bury them too much or cover them too much. So it's just a very light kind of sprinkle on top. I'm not going to water these either because there's enough uh, moisture in the compost and they were soaked as well for about four hours today. So there's enough moisture there. We'll let them use that up first and settle in before we do any more watering. Okay, so. My God, my hands are not going to survive today. <laughs> and as always, don't forget to label. I had this one written out before I even started. So they're my pink ones. So there we go. First try down. Let's run up, get started. Okay, I'm back. I'm on to my second tray. I tried just lying the um the lengths of the briars across them. It just wasn't working. They were just moving too much. It's too time consuming to cut the briars into each individual bit and kind of stick them down. So I've decided I'm very sorry, the chickens have just decided that they want to kick off. Girls, 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 he's okay. What's wrong? Huh? Okay. Please just ignore them. So what I've decided to do is I went out and I picked some thistles. The uh, thorns on these are, are really aggressive. They're really sore. So they're actually probably better than the briars. So I am just going to cut a few pieces of these into the top. I know eventually they'll break down, but I think just initially they might give enough protection to get the plants started off. I know this is still time consuming. It just doesn't feel as time consuming as doing the briars. So do a little few bits in each one. Her little mousy mousies or radigans will not appreciate it going into their snouts when they dig down but oh well sorry okay just gonna put a bit of this on each, the top of each one okay am i planting ranunculus corms or am i making a salad who knows so that's the situation there very light covering because I'm conscious of the fact I don't want to bury them down too far so I'm nearly just doing oh my god he's okay I don't know what's going on with them chickens um, I'm, it's just more to hold the thistle leaves in place now at this stage so I'm just doing a little sprinkle sprinkle I feel like I'm on an episode of MasterChef or something there we go. So that's how they look. And I'm going to go put them over in the shelf with the others. So there we have it. All the ranunculus I planted. Um, I'm really, really hoping my little trick of putting in the thistle leaves is going to keep any little visitors out and stop them from digging them up and eating them time will tell i keep a really close eye on them and if i think it's not working or there's any sort of an issue i'll come up with a different plan but for now we'll go with that and see how it goes and um, it's over here with the rest of the flower seeds which are all doing really really well we're getting great germination on them so i will pot them up now start potting them up into the next size of the soil block whenever i get a chance but for now that's the ranunculus done